You've got to tune to the afternoon show. It is listener and amplifier powered KEXP. You just heard music from Perfect Pussy, the song Interference Fits. Right before that, Not a Surf with Inside of Love from Let Go and The Cure starting off that set, Love Song from Disintegration. All three of those songs related in a, in a series of seven inch singles to my guest in studio right now, Kevin Devine. Welcome to KEXP. Thanks, Kevin. Happy to be here. It's great having you here. We'll, uh, we'll talk about those singles in a bit, but uh, how about a couple songs first? Sure. Yes, sir. Uh, this one's called Day Drunk. Day drunk is what I want to be When I'm tired of being seen Day drunk is what I want to be When I'm tired Blow it out Day drunk Is what I used to be No Jimmy Buffett songs No island imagery It's old men Dying retirees Bellies on the bar Elbows up with me I was 25 I was terrified Locking stalls, cleaning lines off a toilet seat Afraid of running out You are the drill, you are the test The big inviting nothingness The parachute, the great escape From comatose to wide awake You are the drill, you are the test the big inviting nothingness The parachute, the great escape From some place to any place Kevin Devine, live on the afternoon show. Track is Day Drunk. Playing tonight at Barboza. Want to kick into the uh, sure. next track? Thanks. And tomorrow. Tomorrow at Barboza. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah, but tomorrow there's probably something Barboza. good there tonight, too, if you want to head down that way, I'm sure. So you get to hang out in, uh, in Seattle tonight. Yeah, which is rare. More than a night anywhere doing this is rare, so it's, it's nice. Yeah, yeah. I forgot about that in the email thread. You came in a, came in a day early yeah. to, uh, to play for listeners. And see the lights in this room. It was worth it. I know. It's cool, right? <laughs> it's very cool. It's <laughs> exceptionally cool, actually. It feels well, a little psychedelic right now, but it's great. Yeah, it's perfect for the, the music. Good. For a dude who's <laughs> flown all day, too. I feel like I'm in a dream. So. Yes. Nice. Um, this song's called No History. The future was a plane through a skylight Over Tribeca at 8.45 Brother at a conference room table Watched the future rearrange all our lives I was sleeping in her bed for the future First and twenty and five miles away Her roommate knocked, he was a relative stranger K 
Kev, I need you to come out here, okay, okay The future was me drunk at my desk job Update the database, reflect the deceased Can't if it's Gerald as a digital graveyard Next to each name I typed a lowercase d I was frightened by the face of the future It had the teeth of perpetual war I called my father, he said, I know I see it I thought it made sense, I don't anymore Fire trucks everywhere The anger, the mourners No history, it's dead in the air The future was an ad during football We are supported by the will of the world From the floor I felt everything tilting Watch my brother hold his 10 month old girl 15 years later and we're still in the future The blood and money didn't fix anything We've grown accustomed to the depths of the danger This is the future, severe and always happening The mosque on my corner The fire trucks everywhere Kevin Devine, live on the afternoon show, stripped down acoustic on the album Instigator. That song totally rocks. And, and Kevin, man, that is the song. When I first heard Thank that, you. it stopped me in my tracks like I was, as the lyrics were unfolding. And, um, and I had to just listen to it again and again mm. and again. And you write in character, right? Sometimes. The, the, that one's half and half. Because, man, it just... Felt so real. That stuff is all, a lot of the detail orientation in that song is called from being there at that time. Yeah. For family and, yeah. I mean, did you have, you didn't have a brother who passed away in, in uh, 9 11? No, I did not. I had a, the, 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 the first verse of that song, um, my brother, I used to work with him at, uh, in Tribeca on Harrison Street. And he, on the sixth floor, in the sixth floor of the building we worked in, he was there for like 15 years. There was this, skylight that looked like a captain's wheel or something and a big boat and um he was literally doing that he was preparing for a meeting in that room and looked up through the window and so you know there was it was like where those lights are you know yeah um i had a brother i have a brother who worked in the trade center as an overnight trader yeah and he left at 6 a.m that morning wow um yeah, just, it's, it's all in there. Yeah, the, the story, the, the lyrics are just so incredibly powerful and uh, the way you work the melody. I don't know, sometimes when melody works with certain emotional uh, mm. lyrics, it just drives home the point even more oh. or the emotional quality. And, and seriously, that song is just uh, incredible. Thank you. Um, so you're a great storyteller and you're known for, for, uh, for having lyrics that are so real, like that mm. last song. Uh, is that something that comes natural to you? Well, I, I don't know. I mean, I've been words. I like words. Yeah. And, and since I was a kid, I mean, in, in, you know, went to public school in New York and I was always drawn to like, you know, writing short stories and poetry. And I was the, I was the president of uh, the poetry club in an all boys Catholic school in wow. high school, which was not like a fast track to popularity necessarily. But uh, I've, I, words have always been a big deal to me. So, um, but there's some things I can't write. Like when I try to write short fiction or if I try to write like a sc screenplay or something, yeah, it comes out ridiculous. And in whatever voice I was most recently listening to that does that yeah. better than I do. Yeah. But songs and, 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 I, I bits of journalism here and there. And that, that, that feels like a better shape for it for, for, for me. But uh, it's some of it comes naturally, I guess, and then some of it is like obsessively working at it for a long time. 
Yeah, in no history, um, as you explained, you had a personal connection. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, are there other examples of, of songs where you've just had to completely sort of absorb a character and then uh, write from that perspective? Yeah, I, and I think that this uh, this might might sound like a cop out, or maybe it's like a cliche answer. People who do what I do give, but I, most of the songs tend to be composites. They're a bit of both. Yeah, they're like you know, if they're memory songs, like no history. There's my girlfriend at that time lived on the corner of 20th and 1st, and that's where I was. And her roommate did knock on like those things are real. But there's other things in there that it's like mixing um, journalism and poetry, mixing dream and memory. You yeah. know, and I think that. Um, there's a song on a record called Between the Concrete and Clouds called Awake in the Dirt. And that song is uh, the Mary Lavav character from that Philip Roth book, Amer- American Pastoral. That was like, I'm not in there at all, but it was fun to get. It was a little scary and weird to get in her head or try to. But there's songs like that, too. They're just straight up, you know, character embodiments or whatever. Yeah, that's got to be fun and weird. There are people who do it way better. I feel like I, I only will go there if I feel confident about going there, you yeah. know? Yeah, who do you feel does it way better? Oh, I mean, I think that, um, you know, there. Are, I, I think that there are tons of songwriters that, that seem to be able to write conceptually and in character really effortlessly. Um, and uh, some from around here, I think, you know, like Colin Malloy uh, writes like that a lot. I, I don't always even know where he is in those songs sometimes. Yeah. And, and I think he's, I think uh, Bazan is great at that. I think um, like, and there's a lot of I pronoun stuff I use too, where I'm not necessarily talking about me, yeah. but it's, uh, you know, I like blurring the lines with it, but. Yeah, it's great from a listener perspective too. And you do such a great job at it. Kevin Devine here on the afternoon show. Now you've released nine albums in like uh, just <laughs> over 10 years and then done a, bunch of other projects as well so that's kind of insanely prolific are you like a obsessive (laughs) songwriter workaholic i I don't know i mean what it feels like to me is so yeah from 2003 to now uh i used to be in a band called miracle of 86 that was actually the first band that i ever played with on kxp at the museum of television and radio with john that was like a past life 14 years ago but we made a record. I did nine under my name, this Bad Books thing I do with the Manchester Orchestra guys. We made a couple records. But around 2003 was when it shifted to where this was what I was able to do for a living. I left other work around then, 2003, four. So in that time, like, I, I guess it, by some metrics it's obsessive and prolific, and by other metrics I feel like it's what I do. So when I have the availability to do it, I do it. Um but I get, I get it when you look at, like, there's certain bands that have been around longer than me, and I'm like, oh, they're only on their sixth record. I make, I'm making too much music. I need to, like, <laughs> I need to knock it off. Yeah, well, but, in your case, I mean, like, you say, okay, it's what you do for a living, so in some ways I don't want to characterize it like a job. But, uh, but people can't, you can't turn on creativity necessarily, no, right? No, no, I can't. I definitely can't. If I try, you can, you can start the engine and let it cough for a little while and see what comes out. That, that's part of the process. Yes. Sometimes you're clearing your throat and sometimes it's actually, um, something good comes out, but, but, uh, so there is a bit of discipline to it, but there's also, you have to wait for the lightning bolt a little bit sometimes too. Yeah. Are there any tricks to, uh, to seeding the lightning bolt? I, no, I mean, I feel like I have to, if I have anything that feels like an even halfway decent idea now, because I also have a 14-month-old daughter. Yeah. So when those come, I got to like get it down some way very quickly. And there's like this backlog of 30 second to 10 second to 80 second ideas that are like wow. you circle back to and you're like, is that a thing? Um, and I do think there was a period of time with the last like three or four records, I would, my wife would go to work and I would start chopping, you know, from like nine to six or whatever and see what came out. And some days you get something and some days you don't. And some days you get something at 545 and you have to ask for (laughs) clearance to stay in it. Um, But I do think some amount of like trying to turn the engine over. I used to just, well, I think when you're younger, you really just hope you get struck by lightning. And I, I feel like you have to, you do have to kind of chase it, storm chase a little bit more now, I guess. But. And there's a discipline you have to apply. I'm sure with uh, being a, uh, a new father, congratulations. Oh, thank you. There's a wealth of uh, material there. Yeah, there's some stuff on the last record that was like when I knew she was coming, but I didn't know yeah. who she was yet. 
um, there's a few references to it, but I'm also very mindful of not writing the like dad record exclusively. Yeah. And, and there's versions of the dad record. You can write a cool one and it's going to sneak in no matter what, actually. It's just, it's just so pervasive and uh, immersive, all encompassing that I don't know how it does. And I've written about six or seven songs since Instigator and she's turned up in a few of them, <laughs> but... It's Kevin Devine live on the afternoon show playing tomorrow night at Barboza, then at the Bunk Bar in Portland on uh, Sunday night. And the new album is Instigator. Do you want to play that song? Yeah, absolutely. Just like you tell me to I draw it straight as I possibly can I come as close to the truth as I ever do I take some liberties, I am what I am And that surprises everyone I wanna be your instigator Molotov in your clenched left hand I want to be your instigator, your dynamite, your weatherman. Jumped on one foot till they fell from my ear A garbage sea thick with steel chips and airplane glue I poured it all in your lap, baby, here I was surprised like anyone I wanna be your instigator Molotov your clenched left Divine Instigator, title track two of the newest album here on the afternoon show. Thank you for that. And uh, you have this uh, series of uh, split singles, the Divinal series. Tell me about that. I can tell you about the awful name quickly first. <laughs> Rob Schnaff made a record with us called Bulldozer, and he made a record for me before that called Put Your Ghost to Rest. Bulldozer and Bubblegum, we put out at the same time in 2013 on our own through a Kickstarter, and I didn't know what to call the label. And he's become like a buddy, but also like a guru a little bit. And he was like, you got to call it Divinal. Your name is almost <laughs> Vinyl. I was like, that is so cheesy, dude. And he was like, it's the perfect amount of cheesy. Whether he's right or wrong, it's up to debate. But that's what we called the label for those records. So this split series. And I all think these, he's right. You think he's right? Yeah, yeah. All right, I'll go great. with you then. That's fine. I trust you. <laughs> um, the split series was kind of, I feel like, I've had this weird career where I've gotten to play with a lot of different kinds of artists and bands. And I've done a lot of touring with people that are kind of like, um, you know, sort of like people like Katie Tunstall or these people that would play like uh, places like the Hotel Cafe in Los Angeles, a certain kind of like singer songwriter. And then with like more indie rock leaning people, the Ockerville Rivers and Not A Surfs and, you know, things like that. 
And then like bands like Brand New and Manchester Orchestra that are kind of, I guess the emo thing is attached to them, but I think of them as like the coolest possible wing of that music as it exists currently. Mm -hmm. um, so I've gotten to jump around a bunch. I can't always manifest that in every tour I do, but I thought if you do these singles where like Perfect Pussy Meredith's band is like, you know, they're like a straight up hardcore band. Yeah. And Matthew, not a surf, it's these like very beautiful power pop Sweet songs. Pop songs yeah. Symbols E guitars, it's these kind of workout guitar, Odyssey, indie rock stuff, bit mathy at times. And Tiger's Jaw is a really great young emo band from that's like, to me, they sound like the Lemonheads or something, but people call them emo. I don't know. Um, and so it was just kind of a way to be like, I could stand in this place and a bunch of these things can, we can all make sense together if I'm like kind of the hinge. And then we did these shows in, uh, in New York, Boston, and Philly in the end of 2015 where all of them played. Mike Kinsella from American Football and Owen. Wow. And it was like a variety show. Like my band was the backing band. We were the backing band. And we played with each artist on the split series, like three songs by them. I would do three songs, three songs by the next person. We did like raffles for local food drives and stuff. Wow, very cool. It was amazing. It was, uh, to me, it was amazing. All these people said yes in the first place. And then you were able to pull off a show with them all. That they, and they all were like, I was just, I, if three of them said yes, it was cool. And all six within a day were like, cool, see you there. I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so it was, it was, a cool thing we did between records, and I think we're going to look to do another series, too. Okay, so series one is done. Yes, So sir. you put out six singles. Uh-huh. So those are gone, long out of print, I imagine. Mm, most, I think one or two, there's like 50 copies left, but uh -huh. the rest of them are out, yeah. Yeah, and you're thinking of doing it again. We're definitely going to do it again. We're oh, just cool. kind of figuring out. We're in the early stages of getting it together. And was the concept, uh, if you're, if Matthew Cause is one of them, then you do a Not A Surf song and... It depended. It was up to each. I left that up to the people I did it with. Yeah. And Matthew, by the way, I can't say this enough just quickly, was like the hinge on which the whole thing worked. I asked him first. We've been friends for about a decade, but I'm such a fan of his. If he said no, I don't know that I would have asked anybody else. I would have not been emboldened to. And he was like, that's a great idea. Let's do it. And then it went from there forward. But with Matthew, we talked about covering each other. Um, with Meredith, we had both had some people close to us pass away. And we talked about kind of writing around that. Um, Tiger's Jaw and I believe it was Jesse from Brand New. Uh, we picked a third party and covered that band. So which you picked up yep. on, yeah. Tiger's Jaw and I did The Cure and Jesse and I did R.E.M. Oh. And then uh, Mike and Symbol Z Guitars, we did original songs. So it was kind of like whatever people wanted to do. With Mike, we talked for a minute about writing together, like long distance, mm -hmm. and then our schedules mess that up but so we got what we got that's cool kevin divine here on the afternoon show look forward to series two of the uh divinal split uh seven inch series and uh man i love the most recent album instigator thank uh, you how about one more song sure from? yeah thanks for having me you bet uh if they're listening this is for uh carrie and Edie. all my lives are Coming through and even though there isn't room I save seats for myself Invite them in, wish them well The way I feel and the way I guess I felt I was 23 and crazy Frightened, overwhelmed and angry You said that's not how I see you You treat yourself unfairly Don't treat yourself unfairly I was alive back then I was alive back then I was alive back then I remember when It was Christmas We were wrestlers Bay Ridge Parkway Our apartment We were 
fast and best friends We were just little kids You were Lenny Dykstra and I was Wally Backman This was before I got so lonely With my lovers, with my family Scared of living, scared of dying Scared of being happy I couldn't let myself be happy But I was alive back then I was alive back then I was alive back then I remember when Kolinkowski asked me who I thought I'd marry I answered your name Years before we would date Years before he'd officiate our wedding You never know, you're never ready all your fear is just confetti Let it blow all around your bedroom When it gets too heavy Don't let it get too heavy I was alive back then I was alive back then Asks you if you're ready When they're handing you the baby My mother said, son, you can't imagine You'll have your mind blown, honey You'll be crazy in love, honey And I was alive back then I was alive back then I was alive back then I remember when Now I am again Wow, sweet song, beautiful Thank you Kevin Devine, live on the afternoon show Blowing Minds, <laughs> I was alive back then From uh, the new album, Instigator Stripped down acoustic versions The record, as I mentioned, is a uh, very electric. Yeah. So it's nice to hear the songs in this format, too. Format. <laughs> I want to say uh, Damon Cox from the band And Horse plays drums on the record, and Jay Russo, who used to be in um, Mer Mercury Rev and, and uh, Hopewell, play bass on the record. So I want to give them their due props for what they did on the record. Props to them, man. It sounds great. The album is absolutely great. I love it. Um, so thank you so much thank again you. playing tomorrow night at Barboza, then down in Portland at the Bunk Bar on Sunday night. And a huge thanks to Jim, Justin, and Scott on video, Allie and Cole taking photographs, Kevin Suggs doing sound, Rees running the board, Jen volunteering, helping out uh, behind the scenes. And thanks to all the KEXP donors and amplifiers for making in-studio performances like this one possible. Kevin Devine, live on KEXP. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's KEXP Seattle. Discover new music at listener-powered kexp.org.